Hey Soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we're taking a closer look at someone who you may be either worried about or want to know more about. Maybe you feel like someone could be deceiving you and you want to understand the full reality. Or maybe this is going to turn out to be a wonderful person and you just want to make sure whatever the case is, this is the reading for you. We're taking a closer look at a person that you have in mind what and getting to learn more about what is their hidden reality and to do this reading we are going to be picking three cards for today's reading ah oh, i feel like this one is the first one one two and three let's see what we have for pile number one, you have one of the Sabbaths, Mabon. I don't know, I'm not sure of how they're pronounced exactly, so forgive me if I mispronounce them. Um, for pile number two, we have Sam Hain. And for pile number three, we have Lamas. If you like to pick with crystals, let me add them right now. There we go. So for pile number one, we have the Aura Quartz. And this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, you have the gold blue gold stone in the shape of a heart. And this is what your crystal looks like. As for pile number three, you have the clear quartz. Oops. And this is what your crystal looks like. So take a look at which one of these three cards or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And that will probably be the pile for you here today. Feel free to treat this reading in the way that suits you the most. You can perhaps uh, assign a different person to a different pile and learn more about them. Or you can assign several piles to the person you're inquiring about to get more information. It will all depend on what you're intuitively feeling. Your intuition, as I always say, is your magic that always guides you to the right readings. So let it lead the way. You'll always learn how to use it as you use it more. And as usual, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I'll see you in your readings. Hey soul family, welcome to your shuffling and card um, pile, I mean preparation process. It is so lovely to have you here as we prepare for your piles. And in today's reading, we're getting to know someone better that you have in mind. And um, we're getting to know what is the reality of this person. Actually, before I begin the preparation process, let me first introduce your cards to you. On the left are the oracle decks and on the right are the tarot decks that we will be using for today's reading. And as I always say, if you're interested in any of the decks that I use, you'll find that I list them down in the description box for you to check them out whenever you feel called to. Okay, so I feel this one. Let me pick it up for you. There we go. 
What is the reality of the person you are inquiring about? Can we kindly help them with this question, please? What is the reality of the person they're inquiring about, please? Ah, thank you. Okay. Picking up this one. One. I feel like this is one, two, and three. Okay. Next. We'll pick up this one. Ah, this one's moving. Thank you. What is the reality of the person you are inquiring about? Okay, so we're going to pick up the first tarot deck for this reading, and we're taking two, and I see the two, the first two popped up. We're taking two for each pile. these two so we're gonna put them right there now we need a second one there we go okay next deck what is the reality of the person that you are inquiring about actually I feel this one so I'm gonna take it What is, I think, the reality of the person you are inquiring about? Okay, next deck. Thank you. What is the reality of the person that you are inquiring about today? I feel this one. Here and this one. There we go. As for the last deck, it's such a big one that I have divided it into two so that it doesn't fall by accident as we prepare the cards. <laughs> In reality, that's not the full deck. Let me bring out the other half. There we go. So, let's now shuffle. Oh. What is the reality of the person that you are inquiring about? I'll shuffle it a couple of times and then I'll just, well, change of plans. I was going to say I was going to pull out the cards from up top. Thank you. So... Here we have three cards. We'll leave it the, the way it is. I see this one popping up, so I'm going to take it. So how many cards <coughs> are left? We'll take one for this one, and we'll take this one for the last one. Wonderful. Oh, my goodness. This deck, deck does move around. <laughs> okay, so... Our three piles for today's reading are now ready. Let's put them neatly together for your reading. We'll take this one first. And that will be pile number one. Right. With the Oral Quartz, pile number two, right there, with the blue Goldstone, 
and to pile number three. with the clear quartz. There. So, your three piles for today's reading are now ready. Thank you, as always, for spending this sacred time with me. It is always loved and appreciated. Love your energy and love you guys very much. I'm very... Um, appreciative my heart is filled with gratitude for having beautiful people like me around me every day it's something that i never take for granted so thank you and let's get straight into your reading hi pile number one welcome to your reading you have chosen the beautiful aura quartz let's keep it right here for you as well as one of the sabbats Maben. Let's keep your card right there. Yeah. And let's take a look at your oracle cards first. Figure out more information about the hidden reality of the person you're inquiring about to get to know them more. And um, so you have Baldure. This is one of the uh, Norse mythology gods. Okay. Gods in North mythology. Odin's son. Let's keep Baldure right here. I think that's the space that we have. Yeah. And then we can put the other two cards here. You have change. Interesting. And you have the spirit. Personality, mood, soul. Look beyond the obvious. And I see here lies. Okay. Right, so now let's explore your tarot cards. Ooh, you have the Hanged Man. Mm -hmm. You have the Knight of Pentacles. You have the Knight of Swords, so two knights, okay. You have the Emperor. Mm -hmm. the judgment card you have the eight of cups you have the ten of swords and you have the temperance card so much information here let's take it step by step first of all with the hanged man here taking my attention i want to point out the idea that i really feel that this person is presenting themselves first and foremost in a very different manner than who they are on the inside whether they mean this or not this may not by the way turn out to be something bad like for example some people um, initially come off as shy but when you get to know them more they're very outgoing and uh, very fun to be around and some people um, show an honest facade but then when you get to know them they're full of lies so as we really explore your reading we're gonna find out exactly um, more about this person but there's certainly a facade um, that this reading is breaking um out of you even he you even see here here lies so there's a lie in the facade and what you it's a ghost i know we see it here but usually you don't see ghosts so there is more than what meets the eye with this person uh, my dear pile number one let's first before we get dive deeper into the reading and get to know more about this person how about we take a look at your main card Find out more information about uh, this Sabbath, Mabon. 
it seems to me like it's during the season of Virgo and Libra mainly. So let's see what the guidebook uh, quickly says about Mabin. It says Mabin is also known as the autumn equinox. This, the se this is the season of change. It is a time of cooler nights and changing leaves. For fasting and gathering with friends and family. I also notice in this card, so we're getting the idea of changing seasons, right? Because I'm starting to pick up a pattern in this reading. You see, we have the sunflowers here. It's uh, uh, the sunflowers, you know, is someone who's greatly seen. I am channeling the energy of great charismatic uh, energy, perhaps even masculine energy, by the way, masculine energy. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a man or a woman, but I'm reading energy. A lot of masculine energy, someone who uh, is seen uh, quite attractive because Baldure was very um, handsome, great, gracious. So I'm getting this idea that this is a person who gives off the facade of being um, attractive, uh, of being put together, poised uh, with power. And they usually give their attention when they want something. Th what they do here, it seems like they offer something. With the Knight of Pentacles, so sorry, pile number three. With the Knight of Pentacles, it seems at a first glance that they're offering something stable, just like the energy they're exuding with the Emperor. They're very poised. And so you would think that what they're offering, whether it's a friendship or a business offer or a romance, whatever they are offering to get what they want, is not something that is going to stay for long because you have the Eight of Cups in conjunction to that stable card showing that there's leaving right away. You even have the car with change here. Remember when we said uh, changing season? And so they quickly change, it seems, when they get what they want or if they don't get uh, what they want. Be careful with this person because there's more than what meets the eye. In fact, the Knight of Wands is known as a knight that goes after what they want sometimes or most of the time, whether they mean to or not, selfishly. Get the what they want selfishly. And so this Knight of Wands in specific looks like they're very spiritual. And so they may be giving the facade of being put together, poised. They know what they want. They go after their dreams. They may be even spiritual. But it looks like to me, my dear pile number one, is that their reality, the energy of their realities is far different from what they are um, portraying. It seems like they can even keep you hanging in there if need be. You know, it's like um, when they want their available kind of energy, but when they don't want, they're not there. And here you have the Ten of Swords. The, the red scarves around the hands shows it symbolizes pain, a pain that they could cause with their own hands. So you, uh, Ten of Swords also is related to backstabbing. And you may quickly realize that this person is selfish, may be a backstabber, depending on whether they got what they wanted or not. Um... Yeah, many people break out of the reality that this person creates, perhaps a little too late. Uh, yeah, it's like the, the reality they are creating is very thin. It could break at any moment. If you have an open eye, you will not fall into the traps 
of their doings. In fact, you have an open eye right there. And I see a, a clear message of keep your eyes open with this person. You don't necessarily have to believe everything that they say. Here lies. Maybe this person oh, either lies or, again, with the facade, makes beautify their words. It may not be as beautiful as what they're portraying. So they either blatantly lie or they dramatize things or make something small very big. Um, <clears throat> here lies look beyond the obvious I really feel like you really need to do that with this person you always need to keep to have an you to keep your eyes open and read between the lines and see more with regards to their intention than what they are saying because a lot of the times you, you will see that they can flip the facts. They can gaslight sometimes. Put it on you. Yeah. Not really an honest person. Mm, at least with the energy of this reading. I feel to deal properly with this person is to be very balanced. Um, it's not about creating a war with them. And it's not about creating um, a close friendship with them either. It's being stable right in the middle, not getting too close and not being, uh, uh, I don't want to say attacking, but not being an enemy either. You know, always keep your ground. Don't believe everything. Stay in the middle, be stable and poised yourself. Don't take every offer that they make think about everything that they tell you and give you very well um, and see if it works out for you or not yeah don't remove the sugar coating when dealing with this person i think behind this person on a deeper level I feel because the Knight of Wands is a fast moving energy. So I kind of feel like there is this need to get what they want right away. Mm. But this person seems very patient. And the hanged man seems like someone who is comfortable, uh, um, who's staying in an uncomfortable situation. So in that case, if they feel they have a clear path of how to maybe get something, they'll be very patient uh, with regards to the need within them to get something. But because this need is there, it's the very need that's keeping them patient, but also the very need that makes them go and disappear very quickly. As long as they see their plan is working, they will be very patient in that uncomfortable position. But if they feel like it's not working, they will be disappearing like ghosts. Okay, so now that we have explored this person, how about we ask in specific, what is their intention towards you? Okay, what is... There, one, two, three, and four. What is their intentions towards you? Four cards. You have the Queen of Pentacles. You're like a shiny object uh, at the moment for this person. Okay. You feel like they've, they feel like you're independent. You don't need them with the Queen of Pentacles. Oh, you have the Six of Wands. You must be very successful with the Queen of Pentacles and the Six of Wands. A, a, a really a shining object because 
Six of Wands has to do with popularity as well. So you yourself could be a very popular person or very successful. Uh, they certainly have an eye uh, on you here. You're a shiny object at the moment uh, for this person. You have the Seven of Pentacles. Okay. And, ooh, you have the Nine of Pentacles. Were you able to see these cards? I'm so sorry. Nine of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. The Six of Wands. And the Queen of Pentacles. This is why I'm saying it's like you're a shiny object to this person. I mean, look at that. <laughs> okay. So what are their intentions towards you at the moment? Um... One thing I can tell you, you are highly sought off from this person, by this person. That's for sure. In fact, at the moment, I kind of feel like they're trying to figure out how to get to you. What do they want? Do they want to be part of your success? Do they love your world and want to be part of it? Do they want a piece of it? They feel like you are very lucky. Um, kind of the energy of having it all. They feel like you're so lucky. You have so much in your world. Uh, uh, what I can tell you is at the moment, they're very focused on you and your life and your success and how you're shining. There is this um, energy of, oh, this person is so far from me, from where I am. So you're a shiny object to this person. There is uh, a lot of focus for sure at this moment on you. Um, perhaps just a little bit of a comparison. Uh, they feel like you are lucky. Yeah. There's a little bit of helplessness energy here. That I'm picking up from the uh, picture. From the art of the seven of pentacles um do they want to offer you something i know that this is part of their personality part of the games that they do but let's see do they want to offer you something soon that you should be careful about actually i do see that they feel helpless here but let's see devil card no they they feel like they they are they they can't do anything with you at the moment perhaps with the devil card there's a lot of uh, comparison like i said and they feel like you're far ahead it seems yeah this is exactly what i see with regards to the energy of this person um what's their hidden reality i hope you've enjoyed your reading my dear pal number one and if you have please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that i upload and please don't forget to check out my productivity book um, my dear pile number one this book could really help you achieve your goals and dreams it's small straight to the point and so you won't procrastinate reading it in the first place but you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away all while enjoying the process and so if you're interested in checking it out you'll find the link to this ebook down in the description box there's also a productivity cookbook by the way if you want to a book that can help you cook healthy delicious meals in a matter of minutes so that you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want i've partnered with a nutritionist to help bring this book to you there's also a vegan version if you want to check any of these two books out you'll find links to them in the description box and my dear pal number one, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful blue gold stone as well as one of the sabbats, Samhain. 
um, let's keep it right there. And today we're taking a look at what is the person you're inquiring about's hidden reality? Are they good? Are they not? What are they all about in order for you to get to know them better? Okay, so you have Loki. Interesting. Okay. You also have... Ah, great fortune. Okay. Let me adjust that. There we go. And you have the suit. It's like um, a faceless man here. Superficial, perfectionism, lacking real substance. Let's find out more. I mean, I don't take everything at face value. Uh, we need to take a look, closer look at the cards and see uh, what the energy is. Okay, but it's interesting so far. You have the judgment card. Okay. You also have the wheel of fortune. I mean, great fortune and wheel of fortune. Interesting with this person, really. Hmm. You have the Empress. Wow, I mean, they must be well off. Mm, in a good position or something. Okay. You have the Queen of Cups. You have the Knight of Wands. Oh, I must have made a mistake. In the first pile, they had the Knight of Swords, and I thought it was the Knight of Wands. Well, I guess it was meant to be read this way. So you have the real Knight of Wands here. You also have the Ace of Wands. Mm. You have the Strength card. You also have the Death Rebirth. And... You have the full card. Mm. Mm. I'm getting vibes very close to the first pile, not gonna lie. So if you are drawn to the first pile, I highly recommend it. If not, let's take first things first. Let's learn more about the sub uh, the Sabbath Samhain. I see that some pain lies mostly in, during the scorpion season scorpio is highly intuitive so either this person is highly intuitive or that maybe you have a very strong feeling about um, an intuitive strong feeling about this person let's find out more together let me uh, bring out some pain uh, I had it ready there. Okay, so let's read it together. Samhain. Samhain is also known as Halloween and the Witch's New Year. It is a time to release and protect. As the veil between worlds is at its thinnest, it is a very good time for divination. Very good time for divination. So I, again, I'm getting this idea that you have a strong intuition about this person. Now, there are a couple of elements here that are, um, how should I say this, that are very um, similar. In fact, near perfect when it comes to similar. So we've, we've learned that some hain falls during the time of Halloween. And what do we do in Halloween? We dress up uh, <coughs> as someone else. Loki, or Loke, is a Norse mythology god who is a giant and is known as the trickster. Again, giving the idea of Halloween, trick or treat. This person, you're getting the vibe here, right? I don't even need to say my conclusion. This person is a faceless man. You can't really make out who they are, right? And... The, transfer, the death card in tarot is all about transformation. So it looks like this person changes who they are. Their whole reality, their personality, their being 
to match what they want to achieve. They can change completely with the cycle here or the circle here. They can change who they are completely to be someone else totally different um, than who they are. Um, very comfortable in changing completely. Yeah. They're all about external judgment, how other people on the outside will see them and perceive them. With the full card being right uh, on the side on its own, in this case, I would say they portray a very innocent, um, innocent fun vibe of the fool, you know? They portray um, innocence, naivety, perhaps on purpose. They're very careful about you never discovering who they are on the outside. And it is very hard to discover who they really are on the inside. Maybe they don't even know. That's why we're not even picking up their own energy. Because maybe it's something that they themselves need to discover. Maybe because of all of the face changes and the character changes that they have done. They have lost track of who they are themselves. Hmm. I see a lot of fortune in their reading. Great fortune, wheel of fortune, the empress, a lot of abundance. Um, are they uh, wealthy? Have they, maybe they've learned through, ah, maybe they've learned or they use the outside facade and they change who they are because there's so much about getting the things that they want. Maybe with the fortune here, they're a bit materialistic. Ah, They're about outside beauty. They're about material wealth. Yeah, how things are presented on the outside rather than real, real substance. Yeah. Also with the giant as Loki, I feel like they want to be greatly seen especially with this judgment uh sound uh, sorry with this judgment card i feel like they enter a place and they instantly want to be seen and heard and be the center of attention and the center of gravity everyone being attracted to them all in all with the knight of wands the real knight of wands here i feel like this person could be a little bit little bit is an understatement quite selfish because the night this is the energy of the knight of wands they go after what they want sometimes too selfishly mm. the reality of this person the reason they display this naivety and this innocence is because they really want to be loved and admired. They, sorry. They want everyone to love them and like them. For all the... What's the word? Superficial, exactly. For all the superficial reasons. Mm. Yes, exactly. Lacking real substance. Yes, yes, yes. I know I read it in the... Uh, beginning but i really did forget it again the white flowers are these white lilies yeah the displaying innocence especially on the face mm. yes i feel that displaying innocence but deep down there's a strong need to control yes so another great part of this person's reality is their need their great desire for two things to go to amass the things that they want to be seen but most importantly to control they slowly lure you in with that 
nurturing energy of the Empress and the naive or innocent facade until they have had a great grasp on you to, um, to perhaps take control um, of you or, your, or the situation or anyone. Yeah, they, they want control, that's for sure. I will say, however, with the Judgment card and this strong Ace of Wands and the Scorpio, I feel like you have a very strong um, voice, internal voice, that is showing you here and there that there is something not quite right with this person. You may have been listening to it or may not, but it's there um, for a reason. There seems to be a great red flag uh, with how you feel with this person. You, you, you're picking up on that energy. With the hat here being purple, I feel like, you know, hats sometimes they represent being closed-minded, you know, having a cover on the mind. But it is purple, so they may be pretending to be spiritual they may be repeating big words to appear spiritual to appear innocent to appear lovely but really they're just repeating words that they've learned repeating things that they've learned to put together rather than it actually being their own thoughts and again you see the purple forming a brain here. We can see a thin layer of this purple. It's kind of like um, thin. It could break at any moment. It's not based on real beliefs. In fact, their minds are cluttered with so many, sorry, with so many beliefs and ideas that they've picked up through their lives, uh, trying to be a different person here and there. Uh, to a point where maybe they're even lost with regards to who they are. Hmm. That's so sad. I almost want to tell them I'm so sorry for that. So sad. I think one of your clues will be that since they don't know who they are themselves, they tend to shapeshift quickly. And you will have an opportunity to see them many times presenting themselves in a far different light than the one that you have been seeing. You, they may sound very outgoing with this group or very low-key with that group or very intellectual with that group or very um, superficial in another group. You know, Loki's energy of shape-shifting depending on the energy or environment or people that they are with. All in all, trying to be loved, trying to be, trying to get something to go after what they want, or trying to gain control of something or someone. These are the main drives that I see with this person. All right, so now that we've had a closer look at who they are, how about we ask, what is their intention towards you? How about we take a look at that? All right, that's these cards. Let's see what we have. Knight of Pentacles. Funny, this came in the first pile. You also have, oh, another knight, the Knight of Cups. They certainly want to offer you something, that's for sure. And it's interesting how they're back to back here. <coughs> Maybe they're going to offer you several things back to back, one after the other. And you have the Temperance card. Maybe they want you to choose between two things. That's why they have their backs towards each other. Maybe they want you to choose between two things. 
They want you to make a certain choice that is beneficial to them. It's like maybe for some of you, it's an ultimatum. Either you do this or I'm just going to have to go or either you do that or I'm going to have to do that. Some sort of ultimatum for some of you. For some others, this could be offers back to back in order to make your emotions more lenient, your walls, your guard more lenient and to start being more familiar with them and to believe them. Let's get clarifications for these offers. Can we kindly get... Ah, thanks a lot. There we go. Clarifications on these two offers, please. Ooh, Ace of Pentacles is certainly an offer. Wow. That is for sure. Nine of Pentacles. So like I said, for some of you, it's an ultimatum. But for some of you, it's trying to offer you something. Many things. It's trying to offer you... They're trying to offer you many things with the hope that you feel very loved and taken care of and to believe the reality that they want to paint for you. And look at the main card. It, it shows Fortuna. They want to spoil you. They want to give you so much. One offer after the next To kind of put you in this um, dream reality. But be careful. This is a trickster. This is someone who transforms very quickly. I wouldn't get used to this energy. Uh, I would use the advice of the temperance. To be balanced. Always, if you're going to enjoy it, have the other foot on the ground. And uh, always know that... Um, this is a person who changes a lot. In fact, with temperance here, you know, this is a time where he's pouring so much into, or he or she, sorry, my apologies. They're pouring so much into your cup. So enjoy in moderation, I guess, with the temperance. Let's get the advice. Let's not jump into conclusions. Um, what is the advice? For pile number two, please. With regards to this person, let's take the first one first. The world cards. Okay. The eight of cups. And the justice cards. So the justice card shows balance. And... I see with the world card and the eight of cups, as long as you are independent and everything is going well, then then you're good. If, if things don't go well, then walk away uh, right away and always keep a balanced energy with this person. Uh, don't believe, uh, don't believe them too much. Always know the truth in your mind. Um, keep an open eye and see why are they doing <clears throat> and offering all of these things. Um, be independent with the world card. Don't depend too much on what they're giving. Um, but if they're good, they're good. If they're not, uh, then leave away. Then leave right away. Don't indulge too much into their inner uh, energy. In fact, try to keep yourself as independent uh, as possible. And my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your reading. Always remember that one of the forms that they like to take control is to pamper and give mm, for people to like them. So my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your reading. And I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book. Um, this book can really help you become a more productive person and achieve your goals and your dreams. It's small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate reading it. 
but you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying the process. There's also, by the way, an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And by the way, there's also the Productivity Cookbook. This book I've partnered with a nutritionist that I really love and believe in because I wanted to help you out in another area of your life to, in order to make it easier for you to become more productive and to pursue your dreams. I know that eating healthy is a big part of our lives and um, sometimes we may opt for less healthier meals because we don't have the time to cook. And so this book is meant to solve this issue for you. It has healthy, delicious meals that are cooked in a matter of minutes, giving you the rest of the day to do what you enjoy. There's also a vegan version. There are 210 recipes in each book. None of them are the same. And if you're not vegan, maybe you would like to enjoy both of them. And my dear pile number two, thank you so much for tuning in. It was so lovely doing your reading. I wish you the best of luck in your life. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful clear quartz as well as the Sabbat Lamas. We'll read it out together and see what it's all about. But I do see that it's mainly during the Leo season here. Okay, let's keep it right there and take a look at the rest of your cards. We'll be starting off with your Oracle cards first. Are these, this, ah, there we go. Okay, so you have the Asgar. Okay, really cool. All right. All right, you have expectation. Okay, I'm getting. I'll keep. I'll keep it until I see all the cards. But you see, you can see the uh, Asgar at the background here, uh, of this card as well. Okay. Oh, you have the sprout, germination, growth, new developments. Okay. You also have, let's take a look at your tarot cards now. You have the death card. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. You have the seven of wands. Right. Mm. You have the death card again. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you have... The seven of uh, wisdom is wands. The seven of wands. It, what? Stop it. Hey, did you see that? <laughs> the death card followed by the seven of wands again. We're seeing a pattern here. Okay, that's the first thing I'm noticing. We'll take a closer look at the cards. That's the first timer. <laughs> you have the five of pentacles. Okay, you have the Eight of Swords. You have the Ten of Cups. And you have the Strength card. Very interesting character. Definitely made me get up. <laughs> okay, so mainly i see a lot of positive things with regards to this person but there's so much depth and there's so much to them that i want to tell you about it's uh, it's so interesting so first things first let's first read about the lamas okay i did leave the guidebook open so that we can read it together there we go lamas is also known as the first harvest transformation oh the death card twice so one of the key words is death and uh, transformation wow isn't that interesting right okay so lamas is also known as the first harvest this marks the hallway point between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox so in the in the middle of the two it is a time for making bread bonfires and to honor ancestors Okay, so <laughs> I 
<laughs> I mainly see a very positive um, character with regards to this person. Because here with the um, harvest, the first harvest, I kind of get the intuitive feeling that this is a quite a giving person, especially with this five of pentacles. You do see someone offering money to a person who may lack. So yeah, the first energy that I see is that this is a giving person, perhaps has a lot of empathy uh, towards others and likes to help out, likes to give, right? Um, very honest person because you have Asgar and in Norse mythology, this is like... Uh, the realm of the heaven where the gods reside. So overall, very um, honest, good person. You know how they say good people, they go to heaven. So yeah, I feel like this is the best, one of the, as, as best as it could get, you know, when it comes to a person, as good as it can get. With the 10 of cups, very loving, very giving. You experience a lot of beautiful uh, emotions when you are with this person and with the expectations what they tell you they're gonna do and the and who they are expected to be the truth and uh, they're gonna tell you the good the bad and the ugly all of it uh, they're very open one very very interesting aspect about this person is that they seem energetically to be a person who stops at nothing to transform and to get what they want. Um, because you do see a plant coming out of nowhere and growing out of nowhere. You have the death card twice, which shows a lot of uh, transformation. It looks to me like this is a person who transforms a lot, grows a lot. If you, um, if you leave them for a period of time and come back, you will almost always be surprised at the rate of growth and the challenges that they overcome um, and the world that they've created. Yeah, they create this heavenly world around them. They're very skilled, very good, and they continue to grow. Now, there's a very interesting aspect with regards to this person. This person does not tolerate any type of games or any type of dishonesty you do see this person standing very strong protecting their boundaries not letting energies that they that they do not like in look at this death card same same type of energy um they don't allow bad energy they don't allow people um with the with the bomb here i kind of feel like any person that they speculate is a ticking bomb. Uh, any person that challenges them, not challenges them, but wants to create challenging energy through games, gaslighting, manipulation, lies. They have zero tolerance to that type of energy. And you do see here um, the, the death card coming twice with the X. They'll just take you out of their lives. And... The first thing that mesmerized me about this person is uh, the death card, seven of wands, death card, seven of wands. They must be very spiritual. I mean, you see synchronicities in their reading <laughs> already along with the heaven. This person uh, must be really loved and is a, obviously a very, very good person on the inside. Yeah, pure soul, I would say clear quartz yeah clear intentions um they have a clear pattern uh, this person you can predict their behavior because they know themselves very well um they are honest and so very easy to predict you're good they're gonna keep you there in their lives and give and be kind they 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 they're such a giving person they probably have a lot of empathy and cannot tolerate seeing others who lack anything they just want to give um yeah so it's very easy to predict their pattern of behavior in general you know um that if i do this then this person is definitely going to do that and if i do that then this person is definitely going to be grateful about it and so on you can totally predict um 
they're consistent is the word they're very consistent who you who they are as a person regardless of their growth on the inside will continue to be this person forever uh, you can count on that now this something is very interesting in this person's reading despite their super loving energy um, their super loving and giving energy make no mistake this person is a very strong person on the inside. In fact, I believe that this cat is wearing a, an amber. And embers are formed after many, many, many years. I'm not mistaken from the relic of wood or something. I cannot remember for the life of me something about wood and hundreds and hundreds of years so this is certainly an old soul this is why they're not um the usual archetype that you know good person probably means that they are people pleaser or weak bad person or strong person means that they um are rude or lack empathy no this is a person who has it all together um, they look after themselves very well they look after others they're kind but they're very a very strong character make no mistake about that highly psychic as well with the black cat here an old soul that is very deep and is interested in forming deep connections it's like um, spending time, really, in heaven when you spend time with this person. Now, the Eight of Swords is really grabbing my attention. What is this Eight of Swords? Quite interesting. There's something about themselves that they're not seeing here. And you need to be careful with that. You need to be careful with that. There is a certain shadow there is that they're not seeing that is keeping them stuck. And perhaps this is the area that may be hidden from you that without meaning to, this is a good, as good as it gets, but without meaning to could be the cause of hurt. Let's explore this Eight of Swords more. I'll get your cards. What is this Eight of Swords presenting? Why is this person stuck, please? Four cards. Oh, yeah. Two cards fell. Hold on. Let me get them. Look at that. The Eight of Pentacles. They're very masterful. They, they do their work with a lot of quality. And they make a lot of wealth, it seems. Hmm. I wonder how this is relevant to the question. Let's keep them here. We might find out. So what is keeping them stuck? It looks like they have a lot to give, that's for sure. So Knight of Cups. Mm -hmm. Ace of Cups. So much giving energy. Wow. What's wrong? Whoa, again. Ace of Pentacles. What is, what's wrong then? Ah, <laughs> four of pentacles. Giving, 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 but not taking. Really? Giving, 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 but not taking. No, I need to meditate on this. Give me a moment here. Give me a moment here to think what's wrong with this. How interesting. Look, the giving is out of this world with this person. But, and, and, and it feels like they're, they're self-reliant. They work and get themselves what they want and they want to give. But for some reason, they don't take. Why? Oh my God, I need to think about this.
Okay, we understand now the idea of a lot of giving and no taking. So let's keep that there for now. Okay. And let's take the main idea and ask, why don't they take? Why don't they take? Well, I would say right off the bat, there's a lot of defensive energy <clears throat> in this person. Maybe they're not trusting. Hmm. Maybe because of their beautiful soul, they had to fight. I, see, I understand now. I understand now. Yes. Maybe because of all of the... Um, this is something I believe they need to heal. They've been on such a defensive fighting mode for a long try time, trying to ward off people who wanted to, to who wanted to take advantage of their taking. So they still don't mind taking, but they mind not maybe believing in the giving of others. They they wonder. Is this person going to hurt me? Is this person unstable? Does this person want something from me? Are they going to end up hurting me? Is the question with this person. Mm, poor soul. They are... Um, I think they, they, have, they have some healing to do with regards to um, taking from others. I know this is not your reading. Would you like me to pull out a couple of cards and see what the solution is? Maybe this is someone close to you that you would like to advise. Yeah, let's just quickly, out of curiosity and out of help for you, if this interests you, just take three cards and see what would be their solution to heal this shadow. Yeah, these are exactly three cards. So... I'm confident we will find the answers for them. Such a beautiful person. Two of Pentacles. Do you see this ship sailing despite the tumultuous sea? Do you see that? Okay. Whoa. <laughs> you have the Five of Wands. Poor soul, they really had to fight people a lot. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> I will see pick their battles. Let's find out more. And disappointment with the five of cups. They have some disappointments to heal, that's for sure. So what is their advice to heal this shadow? What is their advice? Look at that. One of the ships is standing in place despite the moving sea. And the other ship is moving despite the tumultuous nature of the ocean here. And so I see healing their shadow um, requires them choosing between two things. Knowing that the world is what it is and should, we should not be closed off. The world will have good people and bad people. If we keep our energies closed this way to protect ourselves, we'll live in the realm of disappointments and we'll never, as you can see here, cross to the other side to experience more homey, and more beautiful uh, emotions. I see that the advice for this person is to, it's, it's a choice that they have to make. Either they stay still and safe in their place, not getting to know the heaven outside of them in the world, which is all over the place. And that entails meeting people and having to, to go through, you know, the good and the bad and the ugly. And the amazing, 
uh, to find um, good people. So yeah, really the shadow here is about opening up themselves, uh, not being so afraid of the challenges. Yeah, not being so afraid of the challenges. They must be tired. I mean, the first thing we notice, all of this attack, they must be tired. I understand. They must be tired, but really it's a choice. This is the world. Um, it, within them, it might be heaven, but without them, it's still the 3D world. And they have, they are empowered in their lifetime with so much strength. There's nothing to be afraid of. I would say, I would advise them to open up their energy. If they would uh, hear this advice one day, to open up their energy and not be afraid to sail their ship even during tumultuous times. They'll be doing great. There's nothing to be afraid of. And remember, it's not so serious after all, really. So yeah, whoever is not good, we, you know, we set them aside. Whoever is good um, will be like a heaven to this person. Maybe they are preventing themselves from living the very heaven that they uh, present to others. And if they open up their energy with strength, see, this is the card that's not being covered here. They um, be put themselves out there with strength, not being afraid to face challenges like almost everyone, uh, really, they will be, um, they will open up uh, their themselves to the open world, uh, to the open uh, heaven, yeah, to the heaven outside of their closed realms. And this is exactly what I see in your reading. Thank you for letting us uh, channel such a wonderful person, <laughs> such a good way to end this reading. I wish you and this beautiful person the best that life has to offer. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book, My Dear Pile Number 3. This book can really help you manifest the things that you want and achieve your dreams. It's small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate reading it in the first place. But you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying the process. And there's also an audiobook if you enjoy uh, listening to your books. And by the way, there's also a productivity cookbook that I've just released um, with a nutritionist that I love and believe in to bring out 210 recipes of healthy, delicious meals. And the point is that they're cooked in a matter of minutes giving you the rest of the day to do whatever is important to you. I really believe in these two books. I believe they can truly help you out. There's a vegan version, by the way. If you're vegan, if you're not, there are no duplicates. Maybe you can even uh, enjoy both of them. And if you're interested in any of these two ebooks, you'll find links to them down in the description box. And my dear pile number three, thank you so much for tuning in. It was so lovely doing this reading for you. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.